Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to the National Parents Union nightly restorative check-in with me. I am Marisol Quevedore Lucha. I am from San Diego, California, and I am the very proud grandmother of Luna and Baby Sol, who visited me today. And I am the daughter of Irma Navran, the granddaughter of Camerina, Alexander, Francisco, and Carmen. And I'm the mom of Camerina, Emilia, and Sofia. Very, very happy to be with you today on the first day of May. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. This, this week was a long one. I don't know why, but it was a long week. So I'm very happy to be here and I'm happy to be with you. So we're gonna get started with our four, seven, eight with our breathing technique. Um, as you will hopefully recall, and if you're just joining us, we do this every, every night. So it's four seconds inhale, seven second holding of your breath, and then an eight second release. And we do this once a day, we're gonna do it four different times and I'm gonna do the countdown for you. So we're gonna start by releasing our breath and inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, release, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, release, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, release, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, release, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Last night, I was having a, a hard time um, sleeping like I woke up and I did the breathing technique to help me. And it actually, it took me a minute um, to get the rhythm of it. And I stopped, like I gave up and then I did it again. And I finally got in the flow and it really helped calm and relax me. And I was able to go back to sleep. So please continue practicing. You just need to do it once a day, but you can use it definitely um, if there's any time you're feeling anxiety, you're feeling stress, you can't sleep, you can't relax. It's a really great technique. So you do four, seven, eight, uh, four different rounds of that. Um, and you do it just once a day. So today I just wanna talk about um, cyberbullying. I think that's the right word. So I'm preparing this, this presentation for like how to deal with people who are pushing back on you in a negative way on social media, because it's something that happens and there's different kinds of attacks. And so in doing the preparation for it, there were a couple of things that I did. One was I started researching and looking at, you know, some on comments and I look specifically on the feeds on the shows that I do just to see. And I, I don't look at the comments when we're on the show I don't have the ability to see comments. And I felt really bad today going through them because people were asking questions and people were also just saying hello. And I basically have given no response for, for all of these weeks. And, um, but it's just the platform doesn't allow for that. So it's something that will hopefully we can move to something that works better and is more um, engaging in the future. But I think with that also, the benefit of that is that I didn't see some of the comments that people were making that were negative. And I actually had a really good laugh. I was telling somebody about them. Um, be, and, and what I found in the data is that um, not just, so a lot of when I was looking up like social media, like bullying, um, social media attacks, a lot of it was focused on kids, rightly so. And I was able to find data on adults and one in four adults say that they have been bullied online and people have been attacked for uh, 
a couple of things. So the highest number, and I don't know the percentages offhand, I was just reviewing it before coming on, but the highest percentage was being attacked on your personal, like on your looks and on your political views. And it was pretty split, both Republicans and Democrats equally, they didn't mention any other parties, but it was kind of, that that was an even split. More women uh, have been harassed than men. And they also did some uh, racial breakdowns. I don't remember the percentages again, but it's something, you know, when I looked at the comments that were made on our show and, um, and some of the other shows, they're personal attacks. And I just, it just made me feel like there's so many beautiful things, the messages, the people that we have come on have such beautiful messages to share. And I really feel for the people and that's like what they can come up with as a response is to say something negative. And um, they, they've, been, they, they've been funny. So the ones that were for my show, they were um, about my hair, which they actually, they cracked me up. But when you're focusing on that and you're focusing on being like mean and hurtful, as opposed to, you know, like really in the content, especially with this show where we're checking in with people, like there's a lot of pain that resides in that space. And so there's just something I think for us to think about. And also like, we have a choice on how we respond. And I choose not to respond because the, it, to me, it doesn't honor the, the people that, that have come on the show and shared by, and it was some of the most beautiful episodes uh, where there was just some like nasty comment made. And it, it just takes away from it. So I just choose not to engage and focus on all the really beautiful comments. Cause you know, really like out of all of them, there's, uh, there's like one comment and then there's five, six, 10. And some, some are just all positive, beautiful comments. And it can be really easy to get sucked in that one thing and when and forget about all of the rest so anyway i just wanted to share that because i think you know when we leave ourselves open in ways some of us you know we have locked down facebook i used to have everything on lockdown on facebook and now i pretty much make everything public but it's just something to be aware of and i think you know when you're responding reacting to it we don't control we, we only control what we do. We don't control what other people think. We don't control what they say. We control how we respond and we control our actions. And I choose to continue to love and continue to want to promote goodness in the world and to continue the beautiful messages of the guests that I have coming on. And I have a really beautiful message coming on today. Um, so I have Harry Lopez who is joining us. We talked about him briefly last night. So, um, whenever Sasha, you can bring him on in. Uh, so Harry is a life coach and Eliana last night talked about him. Oh, look at that beautiful picture. She talked about him and hello, sir. Um, hello, I'm hello. so happy to be here. Me too. So let me just give you, so um, Harry got on right before we went on and he was <laughs> like looking and I saw the look in his eyes and he goes, I have a question. <laughs> we were like, okay. This is right before we go on. And he's like, what am I doing here? <laughs> what, am I doing? what am I doing here? And so I promised, I was like, okay, I'll give you the lowdown. <laughs> so this uh, so this show is called the Nightly Restorative Check-In. And it is um, a, a part of the National Parents Union. It's part of our programming. So the National Parents Union is a, it's, it's a union that was formed by parents from throughout the United States and Puerto Rico. I don't think we have anybody from the US Virgin Islands yet, but they're parents who are advocates, activists, and I would say even agitators for their kids. These people are fighting for their children and they're fighting for their kids. And there's a, a specifically, you know, a lot of black and brown parents and parents of kids with special needs, um, our LGBTQIA population. So very much, these are like our fighters for, for our families and our kids. And when we're, a, it's a newly formed union. And so we had this plan of like the things that we were gonna do and then COVID happened. So we made the decision to start offering programming. So the president uh, made the decision to start offering programming and then asked me to do this show. So I also was doing a show, um, a Spanish show 
in the morning. I was doing it three days a week today. I think was my last day. We'll see. And I do this show Monday through, through Friday. So it really, it's called a restorative nightly check-in. And really every conversation has been different. We're just checking in with people, having a conversation. I had Eliana and um, my my cousin yesterday on together because they're both my goddaughters. Um, <laughs> and so it's just been a really beautiful mix of people. So when I was looking at my at my show, when I was building up my show last week, I reached out to you. And I think I just told you like a little bit. And that's part of the thing people find with me. I'll ask and they'll be like, yes. And then they're like, what am I? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the breakdown. That's why you're here. So could you please introduce yourself, share whatever you would like with us? Totally. I'm so happy to be here. Anytime Marisol says, I need you for this, or I want you here. I am like, I'm in. Yes, it's a total 100% yes to anything that you're doing and you're a part of. Um, and it's because I deeply trust you. I deeply, um, I deeply admire you and I, I respect you as a human. So thank you for having me on here. Um, as Marisol has, has introduced me and said, I, my name is Harry Lopez. I am a transformational coach, a full-time. Um, I work predominantly with uh, black and brown communities, with entrepreneurs and leaders, um, artists, visionaries, people who have a deep desire to make a, a, just a huge impact in the world and maybe and, and are definitely wanting some support to get there, to get to where they want to be in their lives. And so the majority of my work is um, mindset, embodiment, uh, background in spiritual psychology. I was a former educator. I was a third grade teacher. Then I turned into a, a coach for, for teachers um, in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I was at Cane Ridge Elementary. Um, and so I remember I was... What, in during in my initial in my years of teaching I was I was hearing about restorative justice I was hearing about the work and it was just in the beginning of it, of it really like gaining traction in, in education and to hear that there's you're doing you're on a talk show talking about it and and, and serving in this way is really inspiring um and so yeah I guess that's it I'm I'm based out of Los Angeles, but I'm currently in Miami. My parents are from Managua, Nicaragua. So um, born in, they were born and raised there. I'm a first generation American, first person to go to college in my family. Um, I'm also a member of the LGBTQ community very proudly. Um, and yeah, I couldn't be happier to be here. So how did you make that switch into the life coaching? And, Cause you look like you're 12. <laughs> I know I get that still all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and no trust. So I just want to like I, I want to say this. So we had a show with these with young women, and they're coming back next week. Sasha is one of the young. You met her quickly because she's the producer of our show. Um, but one of the things, one of the questions I asked them is, they are walking libraries. Like they have already at this the, this stage in their life. You know, one was sixteen, two were nineteen. I think Sasha's twenty or twenty one. Like they have so much depth of knowledge already. So I don't say that in a flippant way, but I could see a lot of people like we do have a different perspective about youth and youthful looking people in our society. So um, that's just kind of my. Absolutely. I, oh, I and it's I, I always get this question. So I'm, I've gotten really good about responding to it. Um, just to answer the initial first first part. How did I get into this work? So. I was 23 years old as I, I started teaching at a very young age. And at the age of 23, you know, af after my students were having really good success, I was, I was asked to come on board to join an organization's staff to start to go into classrooms and to start coaching and mentoring teachers at a very young age. And so 23, 24, I'm, I'm going every single, I have a, a caseload of, of, 30 teachers at 15 different schools in Nashville. And every Tuesday, my role was manager teacher leadership development. And so every Tuesday I was going to school with um, learning the, the techniques of results coaching. So I, I tell people that that was the year where I learned how to listen, how to really listen. And this program was through the ICF, the International Coaching Federation. And I remember out of all the things that I was learning that year and doing that year, coaching, learning the, the principles and the fundamentals of, of 
deep listening, committed listening, and asking powerful questions and help people reframe their beliefs and their, their thought patterns about how they were doing, how they were going about their lives. That to me was the most powerful part of my entire year and that, that process. And seeing these dramatic transformational results that, that teachers of mine were having in just 15 minute conversations. Like it, it wasn't like we were having these huge full blown, you know, one hour long sessions. It was me getting on my phone, putting a timer 15 minutes and let's get, let's, let's help you get out of suffering. Let's help you get into momentum and get in, step into your freedom into limitless possibility. And so I started then in the world of education and I got this bug. I got the itch for coaching. And so I was part of this national Jewish organization uh, called reality. And my, my dad's part Jewish. So I was able to qualify and they went, they took me to Israel. I had a life changing experience. I worked with all these coaches and then I received this grant to, to help me continue furthering my learning. So for the next couple of years, 25, 26, 27, I just started working with different coaches and I started just getting, learning the ins and outs, just really feeding myself in personal development work. So I started studying Tony Robbins. I started studying Marianne Williamson, Byron Katie, um, the work, um, Course in Miracles. I was studying all of it. Um, and then I came across this amazing uh, leader um, Alyssa, she was based in Los Angeles and she took me on her wing and she basically taught me everything I know, like so much of what I know. And I was working at a tech company at the time. Um, and I was coaching in the evenings and part-time on the side, just people that I would come about in my life that would come into my life. And eventually I started charging and I was eventually making more money from my coaching than I was at my full-time tech job. And I decided at that point that I wanted to go all in on coaching. And so this was only this was two and a half years ago that I decided to leave my job. And I, I started my, my practice, my coaching practice. And here I am two and a half years later. And this is what I do. So I now lead, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do accelerators and masterminds with people of color. And it is the most exhilarating experience for me to be seeing in just a short amount of time, 30, 60, or 90 days, bringing in, bringing together Latinos um, and, and, and Latinos and, and, and individuals of other backgrounds come together to transform and to support each other. And it's very similar to what in, in old days would have been considered the tribes, like starting these tribes where we're, we're masterminding and, um, and, and collectively bringing together our genius to support, one, support each other and up-leveling. Up um, so that's what I do. And lately, you know, it's funny, Marisol, my, my coaches have been telling me, okay, this whole month, you're saying yes to every opportunity that comes your way. Because in the past, Harry, me, I've been very tunnel vision and just focused on coaching, 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 serving, serving clients. And so this, I've now been open to speaking and I've been doing podcasts and um, features and magazine article blog posts. And it's been incredible been incredible what the universe has 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 gifted me with when I've just said yes to life and so just trusting in the intelligence of life has has been so such a beautiful blessing and has brought me such abundance um so again so thankful to be here with you thank you so how um how are you like in this time we've been in quarantine I don't know how many days um, it sounds like you went home. Like, how are you doing? What's your situation? Yeah, you know, I feel a part of me feels a little guilty when I'm asked this question because, because of the nature of my work, this has been, and, and for so long, I felt, I've felt quarantined as an entrepreneur, like self-quarantined, really. You know, I, I really, I, I tend to stay in my office. I solo entrepreneur. So I take most of my, my work is mostly virtual. So I was on Zoom for so long. Um, I feel like I had been preparing for this for a long time. And I felt, I feel that as light workers, this is the time, this is the time for light workers to step up into the light and to, and to serve like never before, because there's so many people that are suffering. There's so many people that are, that are not doing well, that are needing support. And so my experience and the experience of all of the coaches that I know, a lot of my clients has been so incredibly abundant, unexpectedly, surprisingly abundant. Um, you know, I started my, my recent accelerator and recruited a lot of new clients during this quarantine and it's been the most 
it's been the most incredible accelerator I've ever had because in the past, I never felt like my clients really needed to be on these calls. You know, it was great for them. They got a lot out of it. But now my clients are showing up with such urgency. They're showing up with like, this is it. I've got to make my dreams happen. I've got to make this happen. I can't just talk about it. I got to be about it. I have to be really, I can't be interested in this. I got to be committed to this, you know? And so it's been, it's been incredible. Um, Work-wise, career-wise, that's been, it's been good. Personally, um, of course, I'm needing that, you know, human interaction. I'm longing for it. I'm longing for the love. Um, I'm, you know, I've just, I've just, uh, return back home to Miami from LA and my allergies have been out of control lately. So I've just been really mindful about, um, you know, cleanliness and, um, I've been really doubling down on, on essential oils and things that are going to help me and keep me in really good shape so that, so that I'm showing up for myself and also for my clients. Um, so to answer your question, I, I think I'm, this has been good for me. This, this time I've just, been able to go in like really in just been doing a lot of writing and journaling and meditating um and deepening in my relationships like I've not done before of course I could have more fun like I could just Harry like yeah, I could I could just unwind a bit more than I have allowed myself to definitely so when you talk about like going in being able to go in that's been through your writing has that been through? Can you just talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So, you know, I love what you were saying about when you were talking about the cyberbullying and that you're, you're choosing to, despite everything, despite the criticism and everything, you're choosing to love. You're continuing to deepen in the love. When I talk about going in, I, um, I, my way, my process for going in is typically through these, through guided meditations that I'll do. And one of my favorite guided meditations is the live awake project by Sarah Blondin. The Li- you guys can find it on SoundCloud, the live awake project. It's so beautiful. It's so gorgeous. And she does these spoken words and she, de- she drops you into the most beautiful state of unconditional love and um, guided meditations. But also my, my journey of personal transformation has been, oh my goodness, so, um, so impacted by the work of spiritual teacher Byron Katie. She's been, she's been one of the most groundbreaking mentors for me and I've never met her. And her name is Byron Katie. And if y'all are, when y'all that are listening, go ahead and check out her work on thework.com. And one of the most powerful books that I just talk about all the time that I'm just so in love with is called Loving What Is. So just loving, literally, literally like the title, literally loving everything that is. It's not good, it's not bad. It just is, and we and we drop into the to whatever is, and so my process of going in has been through inquiry. So so much of you know different people have different things. Some people are more embodiment, physical exercise. Some people are really into journaling. Some people are really into you know breath work. Right now has gotten such a huge. Um, is there's so much buzz around breath work, and I love it, and I oof, it's so incredible. My process and the process that I've been taught that I've really deepened in is inquiry work of the work. And so you take a thought, whatever the limiting belief or stressful contracting thought that comes up for you is they're, they won't like me. They're going to judge me. They're going to reject me. They're going to abandon me. And of course, just, just beliefs. They're not, they're just energy moving through the body. Just wants safety, just wants protection, just wants to know that everything's going to be okay. But we take the one most contracting belief, the most stressful thought that you're, that you're experiencing right now. And for those that are listening, they could be thinking about what is the one thing that's really holding me back from really putting myself out into the world, really stepping into the light and serving. It could be, I'm not good enough. That's a common one. I'm not good enough. They won't think I'm good enough. Or it has to be really hard for me to to create change. Like that's one that I see so much with entrepreneurs, especially with communities of color. Everything has to be really hard because so much of our experience with immigration and, you know, growing up, every, you have to work really hard. You got to work really, really, really hard. So through the process of inquiry, we take the thought and we take it through this process and we inquire into it. And we simply ask these very simple questions. Is it true that it has to be hard? Is it absolutely true? What comes up for you? What reactions come up for you? What emotions come up for you? What physical sensations come up for you when you believe this thought? 
that it's had to, it has to be hard or that you're not good enough. And for me, that's been my biggest struggle that I'm not worthiness has been my number one biggest, the thing that I've had to continuously work on in this journey. Um, and I'm very present to it. And we bring compassionate awareness to the thought. And we just love on it because compassion is productive. That's been my experience too, is, you know, there's so much conditioning around being tough on ourselves when we have these beliefs, you know, get your ass together. No, get in line. You know what I mean? Like get that toughness. And, and there's a space for that. But my work is, I signed up to be a transformational agent. So I want real, I want real transformation for my clients. So I know that that compassion and nurturing that wound is the most productive, most loving thing that can be done. And in the, in the words of Audrey Lord, and I know, oh, this is so, this is so beautiful given the, the nature of this community as a social justice education advocacy community. In the words of Audrey Lord, the most loving thing I can do for you is to work on me. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, yeah, yeah, I love that. And then, um, so you deepen into the inquiry and you, and you become free of the thought. And it's like a blanket. The mind is like a blanket of thoughts. And we take one thought, one blank, one, one, one thread from the blanket at a time, and we inquire into it. And then once we bring attention to, into it, we find liberation and it frees us from the, from the suffering. And, and then you get to a point where you free yourself so much. Um, in, um, in spiritual psychology, they talk about the analogy is that you're carrying this, this backpack with really heavy rocks in the back. And you're, we're all walking around with these rocks that are so heavy. And so through the process of inquiry and this freedom that is established, we begin to become freer. We let go of rocks and we become so light. And then we show up more abundantly. We show up more fully self-expressed and in our essence. And then we're able to help other people do the same in freeing ourselves. Every conversation that we have, I just, I always, I think this is the first time we met. We've always felt very connected to you. Um, but I am learning so much from you right now. And I am so glad that you're with us because um, every single thing that you've talked about are things that people have communicated that they're struggling with. And you have put them together like in such a beautiful, a beautiful way. Are you, are you writing a book soon? Oh, you know, that's my lifelong dream my dream to do that. Yeah. I'd love to, I'd love to very soon, actually. I, you know, and that's one of the things I like supporting my clients and uncovering what is your long-term dream? You know, everybody, they always say, when I get to this point in my life, I'd like to be a writer. Why not now? Yeah. Why not now? You know, when I get to make a million dollars, then I'll do this. No, you're, you are that right now. And mm -hmm. so if we just, and just fully believing that, so I, I, and I take my own, I need, you know, take my own advice on that, the writing. Um, I've been starting to write a love, a love, a book about love, about rewiring um, our programming around love. I, you know, there's, a, there's this expression, it's funny you brought this up. There's this expression that people will say is, they broke my heart. Mm -hmm. He broke my heart, she broke my heart, you know. And so a lot of my work is based on relationships and love. Mm -hmm. So the, the title of my book would be called I broke my heart mm -hmm. and so much of, because so much of it is a projection, like, mm -hmm. right. We, mm -hmm. and, and so much of the work that I do is around power and, and power in the coaching standpoint is around taking full responsibility for every area of your life from the coaching standpoint. And I know that there's, this is um, that word. It, it, it means different things in different spaces and different communities. For, for, for my clients and in supporting them and in, in tapping into their, their potential, it, uh, for me, it's around supporting them and in, in taking the full responsibility for everything that they can take full responsibility for. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I'm going into tangents, but yes, to answer your question, I'd love but to very not soon. A tangent, not a tangent at all. Well, <laughs> if we're talking about that full responsibility, like that, that to me is where that work of owning your place and and owning your role in like you said in your heartbreak <laughs> or in your experience that is really hard work that is really hard work because it takes you like you know it's hard it's human nature not to like really see those things 
that we need to fix or that that we're like that are damaging that cause pain that part of us that causes pain to others and to self it's very hard to admit that and so like taking this responsibility it means going into those places yes and and i love that you're bringing this up and i the immediately what i'm thinking about is with projections you know mm-hmm. psychologically with projections and and byron katie does a lot of work around this with the work but let's say for example somebody says they're going to judge me they judge me right we'll just play around with that belief um and that's really or 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 he doesn't they won't he doesn't like me right let's play with that um the truth is the truth is you know there's a projection and we bring it back to the self do we really know that is that true that he won't like you or that they won't like you we don't know from my standpoint it's really we i i i support my clients in honestly not giving a damn what their what anybody else is what their opinion of you is Someone told me one time, my really good friend, Norma Chavez Peterson, I was struggling at work a couple of years ago and she wrote down on a sticky note and I, I have it, I still have the sticky note, um, but it says what others think about you is none of your business. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. What other people think about me not be, it's none of your business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's none of your business. And here's the turnarounds. I support my clients in doing the turnaround. So he doesn't like me. Mm-hmm. We do the turnaround to the self, to the other, then we negate the thought. So this is a three-part system and it's so powerful. And this is how we help people get back into their power. He doesn't like me. The opposite or to the self is I don't like me mm. because life is a mirror. And so whatever we're projecting that they're seeing about us, we're seeing about our, we're experiencing in our own selves. And so I don't like me. There's areas within myself that I've not fully accepted. So it's an opportunity to go in, mm-hmm. to go in and, and to mm-hmm. mother, to, to nurture and mother that part of me that I'm not accepting and loving. That is such a great tool. That is such a great tool. So like using it from that concept of self. So you're thinking that about them, it's because you're thinking, and again, that is hard. People can't, a lot of people can't swallow that <laughs> like, yeah. with that. So then you go from the self. Then you so go to like me. I don't like me. So yep. that's you, number one. Yeah. The second one is to the other. So we say he doesn't like me. And then the other is I don't like him. Mm. There's parts of me where there's parts of him that I'm judging and not liking. And so I've got, this is my opportunity to clear that up, to work on that. Because you're judging and you're the thing yes. starts to say judge me. And so we nobody likes to be judged, but then here you are judging somebody else. Yes. And, and I love yeah. your system. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And judgment is a call for compassion. Yeah. Always. Yep. Judgment is a call for compassion. Yep. And then the first is to the self, the second is to the other. The last one is to negate it. He judges me. And then the last one is super important. The truth is we negate it, the thought. He doesn't judge me. And we so give evidence. We negate the thought. We completely give the opposite. He doesn't judge me. Mm-hmm. That's the truth. And we, we, we give evidence to support that. Mm-hmm. And, and then we get out of this place of, of victim. Right. We right. Victim and we get into, into possibility. We take ownership. We take responsibility. So many people right now are are playing victim. Yep. And whether consciously or unconsciously, they hurt me. They're out to get me. They, they, um, they don't like their, you know what I mean? There's, there's so much victim playing right now. And just bringing awareness to it is the power, is, 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 create, is the beginning of, of, of freedom. Just bringing complete awareness to it. So you don't have to find the results or the answers to everything, but just bringing awareness to where you might be playing victim is powerful. One thing I like giving my clients, one exercise is just writing down on paper, whatever the beliefs are, because so many of us are walking about the world, just holding on to all of it here in the mind. We're just holding and storing it here. But if we begin to write it, we begin to take it away from us. And then we see it and it's away from us. And then we see the thoughts and the beliefs and, and where we're playing out. And then we, be, we begin to take over, power over it. We, t- we begin to take dominion over the thoughts and then they don't run you. 
So that's a, a framework that I really, really like using. It was super powerful because this is work that I, so I, I, I don't have the, the framework for the work that's done, right? I just know that it's hard. I know that I've done some of it and I'm very proud that I've done some of it, but having that framework and that ability to be like, okay, like these are some steps, some protocols almost. So I, 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 I want to know what you think about this because this thought changed my mind. Yeah. I'm sorry, changed my life. Yeah. And it was, <laughs> I think it was Eckhart Tolle on Oprah on one of her super souls. I think that's who it was. And or it might've been his, but I don't know. Anyway, he said, when, when we're, when we're talking to ourselves and we say, I told myself the other day and that concept of like, who is I and who's myself? So he was saying what we think is not who we are. Our spirit is that like our spirit, like that space of, of feeling and emotion and guidance, that core space, that's who we are. Yeah. The thinking is like that construct, right? Like it's, but it's that thing that, but there it's, that's not who we are. And so I'm just, um, I'm just, I just want to know what you think about that. Oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. And of course, I love the work of Eckhart. And yeah, there's that distinction between the thinking mind, the ego, and then the truth of who you are as the witnessing presence, the unconditional love that sees beyond any and all, any and all limitations. Mm -hmm. And so, so much of this experience is about awakening to that. So much of this life is around awakening to the separation of the, to the illusion of separation that has been created through our experiences, through our, through our challenges, through our setbacks, and coming back and awakening to that truth of us as the witnessing presence. We are the love. We are the light. That's our truth. And, you know, there's so much that can be done here with, with, with meditations. There's a really good, you know, Eckhart's book, Eckhart's work is really powerful in this space. There's another resource that I recommend to people that I think is really powerful, which is even more practical, the surrender experiment is a really powerful book. It teaches us to just surrender to what is. Byron Katie's work is really powerful in this. Um, but yes, you in essence are the witnessing presence. You are the love. I know. And yeah, yeah. And, and you know, so much of um, Tara Brock talks about our experience as humans is around remembering and forgetting mm -hmm. constantly remembering and forgetting and and awakening and falling asleep and you mm -hmm. know we have these our cycle and our experiences around remembering that we are powerful that we are worthy that we are inherently worthy that we don't have to try to be worthy that we don't have to work for it we don't need somebody to tell us that we're worthy of whatever we want that there's no we have untapped reservoirs within us of worthiness and untapped reservoirs of love and capacity for love that we haven't even begun to access mm -hmm. and so if nothing else i hope for people that are listening this is a this is hopefully a, a remembrance of the love that we are the worthiness that we are and that what we're all looking for is to be to be reminded and to be loved and to be reflected the love that we are mm -hmm. to be held to be held as 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 the creature the loving creatures that we are to be held to be seen to be seen, to be yeah. heard, to be to, heard. And I, you know, when you talked about that, the illusion of separation, what immediately came to mind for me is how um, divisive our society is at, at this moment, at this point, but especially here in the United States, there's, there's a, I think I actually, I, I'm just going to talk about here. Um, but there's, there's, there's a divisiveness of thought and of um, a divisiveness, I think, about beliefs. And like, there's just this big chasm. And I'm wondering just like about how do we, so Audrey Lord, the, the only thing that I can do for you is work on me, right? The, the most loving thing I the can do for you. Thing, the most yeah. loving thing, that's, so, so I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm trying to listen and look at you. There you go. Like, the most loving thing <laughs> I can do for you is work on me. So like for me, when I think of that, that's how I see these societal things. And then also, you know, like people who act from pain, people who like purposefully go into, like are watching this show and try to find something harmful to say. 
and it's because there's this so like for me like all i can do is work on me and hope that that then will continue to move over to you and yeah. like respond with love respond with compassion or not respond but i'm just going to send that out there Ooh, and i yes that's my hope because i just don't know how else we can start to build a bridge yeah. between these b- between these like sides you know Yes, this is so good. You know, and there's so many different points that you brought up and I'm going to try to hit them all. The first one is around the people that are serving and that are wound, that are hurt, that are like angry. And from that place, you know, there's something that I, you know, my background in social justice, there's this expression of the righteous anger, you know, mm-hmm. and you, and it's so beautiful that you've got all that like energy in that, that mm-hmm. like that desire to create a difference and passion that, that, that zest for whatever it is. But then it, you run a slippery slope when you are coming about it as the wounded warrior. When you are serving from a place of lack and scarcity and victim, when you're serving from that place of empty, you're, you're not serving the world, you're not serving yourself. So it's important for us to double down on our, on our self-care and to, do, to, to heal those parts of ourselves that need that attention, that love. Um, with regards to the separation and the divisions of, of belief systems, I want to just address to those that are listening, if you're here, I just want to honor and welcome you for, for your willingness to be here. If you're here, you're, you're wanting to up-level in some way. So I, I, I acknowledge you. Thank you for being here. Wherever you're at in your journey, wherever, whatever it is that's coming up for you, whatever it is, it's totally welcome. It's totally accepted. You know, all colors, no barriers, no divisions, no walls. You're all, we're here for love. We're not here, we're not talking about anything right here. We're talking about how to, how to, how to better us as humans. We are, East, we are the same. There are no divisions between us. We're in truth. And I speak to the spiritual context of life. In truth, there's no less than or better than. We're equal. And in this physical world, we, in this man, in this man world, in this human or physical world, we create the divisions. I want to speak to... Um, those that may be watching that are criticizing, um, I want to speak to that, that brilliant critical mind. Wow. Those that are so good at critiquing. I want to put, I want to invite you to, to, to I want to invite you to see how, wow, how that has served you for so long but how you can begin to bring down those walls and take off the mask of separation. You could take off that mask. Let yourself be seen because we are here allowing ourselves to be fully seen for the, for the humans that we are. We've taken off the mask and we're here do, doing our work, doing our, the best that we can. I wanna also say that there is nothing, there's nothing that can be said that will hurt us because our soul can never be harmed. So anything that they've got to say, bring it, mm-hmm. bring it. And I, and I love this, oh, go on. I just, I love, so for me, like the, like thinking about the people, I think about them in pain. I think about like sending them prayers of compassion and love and healing, but you also, I think that gift of of critiquing that gift of like, I, I love, you know, in the different roles that I've had in leadership, I love having people who think totally different than me. I love having people with, with, you know, what some other person might say is a difficult personality or someone who is overly critical because they help you capture things yes. and, it, and it helps you prepare and provide and serve, you know, and work for the community that you're working for in a much, a, a much more comprehensive whole way in a deeper way. And so like that, thank you for appreciating the gift that they have, because that is a gift. And mm-hmm. I see this as a thing of coming from pain, but I think that, you know, you have, we decide what we do with that gift. Yes. And, and, you know, that critical mind, there's a way, another way of putting it is the negativity bias, you know, seeing everything for, you know, the, the negative, seeing the, seeing the downfalls for things, all that wants is, but it's being, it just wants protection and safety. It's such a, it's such a conditioned program, programming and patterning. It just wants to know that whatever ways of thought that they've held on to, they're holding on for dear life. <gasps> they're holding on to that belief that they've had for so long. And anything that is contradictory or anything is just, is, is similar, akin to death. 
we're very tribal and, and um, we're very uh, animalistic in our ways. We're part of a pack and a tribe and we want to believe what our pack believes in. And anything, if we dissent from what the beliefs of our pack, we are alone in the, in the forest, in the wilderness. And we're setting ourselves open for death to be eaten by prey. Mm-hmm. And so just seeing where all of this comes from, just coming back to the, ne- to the, the mind, the mind and the biology, the neurolo- neurology behind all of this is powerful. And I also want to deeply love on those that are, that have um, come on and, and expressed um, like pain through criticism, because it is a, life is a mirror. What we put out is a reflection of what we have within. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I want to deeply love and have compassion for those that are, that are hurting right now, that are seeking to express themselves through the critique and, and, and in this way, and all they need is love. All they need is love. And some people you love from a distance. Mm-hmm. Some people you keep at a distance, but you love on them. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say there about that. I think that is so important. And you know, I um, I used to tell my students, so there, I was at a, a, an alternative charter high school, super high, like 99% low socioeconomic, right? Um, and there was this, San Isidro is a town that um, right outside of Tijuana. And there was a, a, a nonprofit agency there that these women, they were elders, would make tamales, sell tamales, so that they could get money to buy books. Oh. And then they, they, they wanted to take the books and donate them to schools. And so the, one of our, our, our school was one that received the books. And I talked with the kids beforehand, um, and, but they were so beautiful with them. But the thing that became so clear to me is that there is, there is somebody right now praying for every single one of us. And it's somebody that we will never meet. It's somebody that we will never know, but somebody is praying for our health, for our well-being, for our healing, for us to do good in the world. Like there are people that you will never see that have you in their heart. And there are people who like knowing that there is that there are people who are suffering in this world from hunger, from war, from um, violence, from abuse. There are people who are praying and sending them so much love and compassion and protection. And I think that like that, keeping that present, I think um, is very important for doing my work. <laughs> because Mm. I get triggered. I get triggered by people. I get triggered by that voice in my head that, um, that tells me all the, all the things. And I, you know, yesterday, yesterday was a day and I, you know, like I was a battle with myself all day long Mm. and the battle, you know, it's not, it's so internal and it's not, um, it's not something that I share, like I, that I share because it, like I, like I got to do the work. I got to do the work with this voice with it. Like I got to do the work with it. And so like remembering that. So all of these conversations that we've been having and then having these, like you were saying, it was, I, I almost call it like this evolution, but you yeah. had mentioned somebody the way that like we, we remember and then we forget. <laughs> Tar, Tara Brock. Yeah. So we remember, yeah. and we forget. So we remember and then we for, forget. Mm, it's so but innocent. I, yeah. Doing that up like this, right? Like yes. we, to continue to, or even like just even going deeper within ourselves. And, and yeah, and staying in that state when you do remember and doing anything by any means possible, giving yourself every fighting chance to stay in that, mm-hmm. in that embodied state of being that embodied leader that we're called to be in the world, the conscious leaders that are open-hearted, that are, that are unafraid to share that, hey, I have breakdowns, I'm human. And you, Marisol, in being completely authentic about where you've been and what's coming up for you, you're 100% disruptive as a result in being completely vulnerable and authentic in that way. And the audience is able to see themselves reflected in you even more. And they're able to see you humanity that you are because you're being so so vulnerable. And despite, despite the struggles and the breakdowns, you're still showing up. You're still showing up and fighting and being of service. One thing I've asked myself a lot 
you know, recently this month, I've just been saying yes, 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 yes to a lot of things. And, and as you know, I didn't know what was going to happen tonight. Like, so here. <laughs> I had no idea. But, you know, I'm leading a work, I'm leading a summit, a virtual summit tomorrow and Sunday, full day, mm-hmm. packed. It's called Chrysalis. It's a metamorphosis summit. I'm doing a, a whole talk about reclaiming your, your truth and your authenticity. And I found myself getting a little afraid. And whenever I find myself getting afraid, I ask myself this one question, and I don't know why it zaps me out of fear. Who would I be if I wasn't afraid? Mm -hmm. How would I show up if I wasn't afraid? And that inquiry, oh, it brings me back to my truth. I'd be, I'd be laughing. I'd be joy. I'd be, I'd just trust and I'd go for it. I'd just go for it. I would. Um, so I think that's that's really important for us. You know, there's a lot of um, what I'm noticing in a lot of my clients and a lot of people in the world. There's a lot of numbing going on with the quarantine, with the corona and coronavirus and quarantining, numbing of feelings like numbing through like through exterior like al- alcohol, yeah. drugs. Yeah, numbing all, through all the vicious, all the vices. Yeah, and Byron Katie would will offer. Food, drugs, sex, alcohol, technology, mm-hmm. one of the top ones. And, you know, I, I get it. I know why. I mean, there's so much that's, there's, our, our culture is not conditioned to sitting still and to being put. Mm-hmm. But I think that I trust that there is something really good that's going to come out of all of this for people, mm-hmm. for folks who've had to really meet themselves and see themselves reflected and have to be with themselves for so long. Like I I'm, I'm trust that people are, are having to do the inner work, the compassion work, the shadow work to clear the stuff that's been, that has been pent up, that has been unaddressed for so long. You know, there's so much, there's so much healing needed right now. Well, and we've needed healing. Like this is the, this is the world like stopping us. Yeah. The thing is, it's it, it's it's been building and accumulating and building and accumulating and building and accumulating, and literally the world is like no, like stop, stop, yeah, like sit your ass down. <laughs> yes, yes. <sighs> and I, yeah. I saw somewhere that like our greenhouse gases had reduced by like eight percent or something like that because you know like our world is recuperating. Hmm. I um, took a walk not on the beach because you couldn't take a walk on the beach, but by the beach. And I have never, ever, 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 ever seen a beach where there is no, where it, the, where you can see like the, the sand, the, the waves in the sand were made either by the, um, the wind wow. or and there were no footsteps. No, there was no foot traffic, no anything. Wow. And the, the beauty of that, of the yeah. still, you know, and, yeah the world is telling us to be still and yeah. of us are not handling it that well, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that for me is what the prayer is, is for those, you know, those people that I will never meet, will never see, but to have that continue that prayer for them. Yeah. Um, I cannot believe that our time is almost up. Wow. So I, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do So if anybody wanted to get a hold of you, how could they get a hold of you? And then do you have any last Last thoughts, last things that your um, heart, your spirit is being called to share. Mm. Okay, so um, I'll share that first, first, and then I'll share the how to get in touch with me. Um, there's something I've been thinking a lot about. You know, what's interesting is there's, you know, during this quarantine and everything happening, I've been seeing a lot of people turn to creation and expression. Mm-hmm. And I always think about this expression that somebody told me once about depression. And a lot of people are feeling undergoing depression. Mm-hmm. Like they may have it, but I want to just be a voice that you have depression. You may have depression, but you are not that. You are whole. You're wholeness. You've always been wholeness. And depression is, another way of thinking about it is depression is suppressed expression. And the way out, the way for this, the way for us to be with this time, to be with ourselves despite everything that's happening to begin to express ourselves, to begin to externalize, call a friend, um, find a mentor, join an online virtual circle, um, call the national team talk hotline, whatever it is, there's so many resources out there, we're really committed to it. 
um, get and speak, speak and share. Maybe it's journaling through that process. And I think um, there's a opportunity for us to get creative. Mm -hmm. Just get, use this time to get, if it supports you, if it feels aligned for you, if you've already been super creative, maybe this is a time for you to just slow down. Mm -hmm. But express through, and for me personally, I've been expressing myself through TikTok lately. And it's been so fun. And I found, you know, I've been laughing more than ever before lately because I've just been able to express myself in a different way that I haven't been on social media because I'm more usually grounded and professional and, you know, spiritual on my social. But now on TikTok, I'm able to recreate my identity. And, and this is such a fun time to, wherever we place our attention, it's going to go. If we're thinking in lack and limitation, that's what we're going to experience. But we're, we're abundant and, and, you know, you know, one of my pastors, Reverend Michael Backwith, he says, in, the, in spirituality, there's no such thing as anxiety or worry. There's no such thing. We don't, you know, we're not that. That's not our truth. We're light. We're whole. We're free. Um, so I wanted to share that. I felt intuitively to call to share that, to express, to create, and to serve deep down, to really serve and be of service to the world. Um, how you can find me, I'm on social media, Instagram, at the Harry Lopez, the T-H-E-H-A-R-R-Y-L-O-P-E-Z, the Harry Lopez. And on, on my Face, my website, I've got a whole bunch of freebies and PDF guides on money and mindset and manifestation, www.harrylewislopez.com, Harry Lewis, L-O-U-I-S, Lopez.com. I love you. I love you too. Thank you. Thank you for being with us and for everything that you shared. I, as you've been talking, I'm like, oh my God, I got to take this person. I got to take this person. I got to take this. Like, like they need to hear this. They need to hear this. I'm so glad you were with us. I also wanted to mention, so you talked about journaling and I had somebody on, Otto Cusino was on the show and he talked about journaling and shared um, some resources. So that show, if you go look at National Parents Union, it was aired, it was recorded last sat, it was, I'm sorry, it was aired, I don't know how long ago, but I believe it was, it was uh, sent live last Saturday. Um, so Otto Cosino. And if you want, um, if you would like some resources on journaling, just hit me up, just send me an email or um, let National Parents Union know. You can find me on Facebook and I'll send those to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to say goodbye from here, Sasha. So good night, everybody. Thank you. I will see you on Monday. Have a blessed weekend. Know that you are loved. Know that you are being prayed for and cared for. And I will see you on Monday. Good night.